specific Phoenix has specifically asked me to record this. So um this is um a climate emergency set net center network meetup on a Wednesday. Um and I'm Jules and I'm gonna do a quick presentation on community climate action. So you should hopefully be able to see my screen. Um, which has a picture of iPhone on it, which is our sign. Um, so we've got 10 acres of land and I'm beaming in from our community pub, which we hope to buy. Um, and iFarm is a community benefit society. And as we move forward into these crises together, it what's really important from my perspective is that as communities, we own the infrastructure. Um, we own the means of building the resilience uh, by our communities, which means that it's democratically controlled and community owned. And that extends to the economic activity that we're embarking on, which is installing of community renewable energy and farming, production of food, um, but also things like retrofitting. So as I farm, we bought 10 acres of land in Norfolk. Um, we've got about four acres of woody car on the left, which is a fen, and about six acres of kind of productive land. And that's Dave, who's our barman at the pub, but also a forest school teacher. And as Dave says, we're going to cover our pub in green science. And the first thing we did was clear the land of lots of rubbish, plastic, tons and tons of metal, Fridges, fridge freezers, CRT monitors, PlayStation controllers, uh, old cookers. You can see some of the detritus that we cleared. Um, and we've installed some rigs where we're growing nutrient dense organic food. And we currently give that away. We give it away. We give it away to Still Good Food, which is a charity, a food bank um, that sell out of date food. And we also provide it free of charge to the patrons at our pub. And that's our that's our pub, and like I say, we've yet to buy it. We've got a toil, we've got a tenancy with an option to purchase. It's an asset of community value, and we have applied to the government for three hundred thousand in match funding, and we hope to receive three hundred thousand via community shares to our community. And we're just about to issue our share issue. And we're going to cover it in green science, just like Dave says. We're going to put solar all over it. Lovely south-facing aspect. Um, we may even put solar on stilts in the car park to provide shade and also shelter when it rains. And we'll probably have a ground source heat pump. And what that means is that we will likely be a net exporter of energy to our village. So we'll start to be the cornerstone of a smart energy microgrid for our village. Because the biggest expense in a pub is keeping your beer cool. Um, so our cellar cooler is the biggest draw on electricity we have. And all of the heat from that just goes up in the atmosphere. So we're really interested in understanding how we use that heat and actually use it in a circular economy fashion. We're also going to retrofit the pub. Um, we're hoping to be the greenest pub in Suffolk and possibly the UK. Watch this space. Um, so as such, we, we've come together as a community and based around iFarm and the pub, we've, and this is sort of a bit of our management committee at the pub making decisions, um, we decided to do some community climate action planning. And so we approached our three parish councils, and I'm a parish councillor now in one of those three in Hopton, come Nettishall, and we've got Blow Norton, Hopton, come Nettishall and Thelnethan where the pub is very, very rural community. And the first thing we did was stakeholder mapping, loads of post-its, you know, and it's not everyone's cup of tea because everyone's done a post-it and no exercise. What happens after is really important. And actually one of our farmers, Jim said to me, I'm terribly sorry I left halfway through, but it was fucking boring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so when do we, we said, when do we get to the action? Yeah, um, so, but what we did with that was we mapped it out into our stakeholders, who's around us. So that includes our educational establishments, transport, political organisations, shelter and warmth, housing, 
our political organizations in terms of parish, di district and county. Who owns the land, you know, and the biodiversity? We've got wildlife trusts, we've got locally, we've got the Little Ooze Headwaters Project, who look after um, a sizable amount of land by a river. Local businesses, uh, hospitality, um, and faith groups as well. So we mapped out who's around us, really important. Beyond that, and this is an example of some of the organisations that we identify that we probably need to engage with and work with, and actually, Professor Tim O'Reardon, who's chair of the Norfolk Association of Local Councils, came for a visit and he said there's real scope for Norfolk at ALC to explore the lessons being learned by community climate action in forms of management, financing, recruitment and a widespread improvement of local livelihoods. And it should be connected to county based devolution at an early stage. So we've held a series of participatory workshops and it's super important that the plan is written by the community because as councils can only nudge, they can request, they can ask, but they can't tell. And councils have some limited powers in terms of money. They've had their budget slashed by 50% since 2010. They're often struggling. They're often selling off the family silver in terms of land. And they probably do have a climate plan and a target. Um, but as we know, some limited uh, opportunity to actually deliver that. So what they really need is community engagement. And if we are gonna do this, we, us, our communities, and if we are going to save ourselves and hit net zero targets and improve biodiversity, that will take all of us. It will take all of us and it will take the rest of our lives. So we held a series of participatory workshops and it doesn't matter how you vote. It doesn't matter what your ideology is because, you know, we're in a traditionally rural reactionary Brexit voting area that is conservative. We've got conservative MPs. My two MPs are Liz Truss and Matt Hancock. Um, and, you know, we have a conservative majority controlled county council albeit the green vote is getting lots of traction around here for obvious reasons. The weather's telling its own story. We've got floods, we've got droughts, we've got fires, you know. And, but to get beyond that, to really come together, we need to talk about what, there's more that connects than divides. So what are our shared values? What are our core values? So we go through a quick exercise, which is write down your core values, and then we all get three votes and we put a dot by our values. And what we decided in our community was belonging, sharing, connection, wild space, community and kindness are our shared values. So that's our starting point. You know, that's that's what we share. Then we then we really look at what does community resilience and well-being feel like for you? Um, for me, it means having a pub that I can set the world to rights in, you know, over a pint with my mates, play some music, do some spoken word, but also probably means some green space that I can go out and exercise in. So we discussed what community resilience and well-being feels like. And there's, you know, a variety of things come up like thriving wild spaces, clean energy, locally sourced produce, um, fresh fruit, and winter veg. Um, wind, water source, sand batteries, you know, lots of energy things, local farmers connecting with your farmers, knowing the name of the person that grows your food. And so we agreed between us what community resilience and well-being feels like. And then we went on to talk about themes and themes are overarching themes that we think we want to work on and are five and they're different for different communities. There's parity between communities. Um, but the five themes that we came up with were transport, energy, housing, food, and biodiversity. And then below those, we have projects that we're working on. So food might be a theme, but an allotment or a community farm would be a project because you know when it's done. So beneath our themes, we used what's called a GROW methodology, which is goal or um, uh, 
reality, which is where we are now, options, what we could do, and also who, who's going to do it. So goal, reality, options, and who. So that's our grow methodology. And the who's really important because who's going to deliver this? You know, who's really interested in ornoth ornithology or biodiversity in our community? There are people out there um, interested in all of these things. We've got engineers, we've got architects, we've got builders, and they're all really concerned about the climate. So one of our projects um, that you can see on screen is um, retrofitting. Um, so we want to identify properties that need retrofitting, go and retrofit them. Um, we know that we've got 550 homes and 84% of them need retrofitting that are band D or below. We also know that if we do three a month, which is a lot of work, starting now, it will take us 13 years. 13 years just for our village of 550 homes. Gives you an idea of the scale of what we've got to do. And in Suffolk, we've got about two or 300,000 homes that need retrofitting. And I, for one, am really, really keen that this economic activity is delivered by a community benefits society so that the um, economic benefit accrues to the benefit of the community. And the government's estimated that it's about £65 billion pounds worth of work needs doing before 2035 in the next 12 years. Um, so we, you know, we ran through all of these things and we all agreed it. And as a community, we came together and we wrote our plan. And not everyone was involved, but everyone was invited. That's the most important thing. And we got about 5% of our population and we wrote our plan, which at 5% doesn't sound like enough, but it's enough for a mandate. It's enough to start and it's enough to take action. And we don't need to wait for permission. We don't need to wait for our government. We don't need to wait for our council. We can just go and do it ourselves. So it's very much grassroots ground up. The outcome of what we've done, we did our planning for three parishes, Blow Norton, Thelnethan, Hopton, Cumb Nestral. And then we, you know, what we found was actually people love what we're doing and people rallied to the flag. And we've grown from three to six to nine parish councils. And we've now formed a Suffolk Green cluster, which you can see our our meeting on screen and we meet quarterly and our next one's coming up in December to compare notes, see how we get on, see how we can help one another, see how we can share resources. And as a green cluster, we are now on a Community Energy South Pathways programme. So we're doing site identification and feasibility studies for community energy. We've got two pubs, our village hall, uh, our school, our shop, our dentist and our church. We're talking to the cathedral in our local town in Bury St Edmunds and other churches in the region. And we've also we're also now founding members of Suffolk's Community Energy Steering Group in consultation with our county council. And, you know, we've got a little bit of funding to help other other groups come and join us. So our, our objective is to decarbonize our environment where we live in the next 10 years, in the next decade, and increase biodiversity along the way. Um, we've got community climate action groups springing up around the country. Uh, we've got a particularly active one in Bromsgrove. We've got lots in East Anglia, unsurprisingly. Um, but we've also got ones in London, Bristol, uh, in Wales, and, and around the country. And we'll help with the facilitation and the training to be able to deliver these workshops where you are, to write your plan, but most importantly, then to go and enact it. Because it's no good having a plan like the councils do, perhaps, and saying we've got a target and then not doing anything about it. So it's really important that we take the lead here. Um, and you'll actually probably find that your council is extremely supportive because they'll be very grateful for the help. We're shortly launching a, a website called The Great Collaboration which I'll send a URL through to everybody. It's got loads of actions on there that individuals can take. And it was originally developed by Herefordshire and their, on behalf of their association of local councils. So you could kind of pledge an action and tell the council you're taking the action. So the council gets an idea of what's going on. 
we're going to launch it nationally, but we're going to launch it with um, lots of other tools and, and we're really with a focus on collective action because we're stronger together. So that's retrofitting, that's community energy, it's um, community allotments and this kind of thing and how you go about doing that. Um, so there we go. That's a little bit of a presentation. I'll pause a minute and just hear from hear from everyone and see what see what you think um, and see if we have any questions. Uh, Peter, you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, that's a very rural setting that you're working in there. Obviously, we live in Sheffield, which is um, anything but. Um, <clears throat> Any ideas about what the differences are that we'd need to go through there? There's parity. There's parity. So, I, I don't know. Do you know Jamie Driscoll? Uh, for those that may or may not know Jamie, Jamie is the mayor of Newcastle in the north of Tyne. I was on his campaign team and I was up, up in Newcastle for about five years. Um, and there will be some huge similarities. Um, first of all, I'm, you know, I'm presuming you eat food. Mm. So where our food comes from is really important. You'll have farmers around Sheffield. I mean, I, I did a project with Gateston's and Gateshead. Again, you might be very urban, but it was surprising to me to learn, actually, um, it's, it's um, about 50% rural area. Um, so around Sheffield, you'll have a green belt. You'll probably have your farmers. Within Sheffield, you'll also have um, brownfield sites owned by the council or, you know, brownfield sites scheduled for development. Um, you'll have massive capacity for district heating um, and ground source heat pumps. There will be um, a, a local authority estate owned by the local council um, that can fit renewable energy. Um, you'll have gathering spaces. I'm pretty sure there's pubs. I guess people like drinking beer. You've got a football club. I do know that. Um, so actually, there's quite a lot of you've got two two football clubs. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so actually, in terms of your stakeholders, um, you've probably got a university, haven't you? I think Sheffield's got a university too. There you go. Two universities, pro probably some vocational colleges. So actually, in terms of the methodology, it's pretty much the same. Because you figure out shared values, your stakeholders, what does health and well-being feel like, and then what themes do you want to work on. So the the methodology is the same for a rural or a or a, or an urban area. Um, and some of our groups are in London, so we're we're looking at doing it in Southwark and Islington, um, and talking to other towns and cities. So I um, hope that answers your question. Oh, three, yes. Um, can I come back in? Yeah, sure. Um, one of one of the big things that I'm concerned about is is defining the area that our particular um, community action group is going to 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 be covering. Um, I think it was some, um, you know, if if I think about the streets in the immediate vicinity of where I live, there's about 400 people living in a, probably about 130, 140 houses. Mm. Um, <clears throat> But I think we're going a bit wider than that, and it, it just feels like it might become very unwieldy. Um, so what's the optimum size from your point of view? Oh, that's a good question. I can't answer that yet. Don't know. Uh, I would suggest London's probably a bit big. Um, yeah. So we're probably breaking that down into boroughs. Um, yeah, I guess in she I'm in Sheffield. I don't know what the population is, um, but Sheffield seems like a reasonable size to go... You know, it's about. half a million half a million that's really quite big um you know i think birmingham's the next biggest after london with one or two million but half yeah. a million again newcastle's about about that about four hundred thousand, about half a million um so i would suggest it's literally street by street neighborhood by neighborhood and then you know build from there so to give you an example of that we're working with a group in birmingham and they're called retrofit Balsall Heath. So they're just focusing on Balsall Heath. And I think they've retrofitted 500 of 700 homes. They're going great guns. Um, so first of all, know your neighbours, knock on the door, get your street, you know, house by house, street by street. And But I can't answer your questions, how big? How, how was the scope of your ambition? I, I mean, go for Sheffield. <laughs> you know. 
Thanks very much. That's quite useful. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, so uh, Helen and then Suzanne. Yeah, just um, I th I think the answer is dream big. Yeah. Um, a handful of us just before we went into the pandemic, put in for a lottery funding, and we got two and a half million over five years. To in order to do it, we had to reach out to other charities that were already established because we weren't a charity and we needed a charity. So we got voluntary action leads along with a couple of other charities. We split the work five five ways. We set up four hubs in different areas, but we did that by looking where there was already people, a little nucleus of people already doing something and more or less helped them, gave them some of the money, gave them the support. And we've also got the fabulous Paul Chatterton from... Leeds University, who was big on donut economics and whatever, uh, sort of heading it up. But by all means, get in touch with Climate Action Leeds and le learn learn from what they've done right and what they've done wrong, because we ain't perfect. <laughs> there we go, dream big. And there's a my favourite Venn diagram from the, um, the creator of LinkedIn is three circles and it's dream the people I most like to work with in the middle and it's dream big get shit done know how to have fun <laughs> yeah so let's let's be ambitious here because the world needs it uh Suzanne were you next yeah um just from a sort of practical point of view I was just quite curious about um the retrofitting in homes in the community mm. so presumably you reach out within the community to plumbers electric you know whoever has experience in those fields and then they volunteer their time to do that is that how it works uh no i'd suggest you start it or or as a business me <laughs> well not you but <laughs> in your community and so people powered retrofit is a co-op that's doing retrofitting they've just raised half a million pounds via fx an ethical investment platform and are going and retrofitting homes there are loads of companies that will go and will retrofit your home already um i'm keen to see the the product the surplus the profit go back to the benefit of the community so i love co-ops you know but it doesn't necessarily have to be a co-op there are companies that do it <clears throat> but should anyone wish to start up a cbs or benefit that's 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 what we're doing where we are and we're working with our local college yeah exactly that suzanne to train um tradesmen to do that and I haven't got it with me here because it's in my car because I've just come from the conference where I've got loads of loads of like hempcrete samples and stuff about you know, and loads of information about how to retrofit in particular listed buildings because we've got loads of listed buildings in East yeah. Anglia. So in terms of the cost, am, am I being a bit stupid? So who who meets the costs? Obviously, the homeowners ideally would meet the cost, but if if you live in a community where you know everyone everyone's working incredibly hard and hasn't got much money. Where does the money come from to retrofit the homes? That's a really good question. The average cost of a home retrofit is about thirty thousand mm. pounds. Um, you know, I don't have thirty grand kicking around, do you? No. <laughs> no, no. So, first of all, there are government grants. If you're uh, anyone's on benefit in a house, yeah. or if you're under under a certain threshold of income, um, all energy providers have a war chest. Lit um, you know, uh, they have to legally have money set aside for um, energy saving um, work. So to give you an example, Eon, I talked to them, they've got 249 million sitting in their bank account that they need to spend. Um, and they're really keen to do our three parishes all, all in one go because it's a, a big project. Um, I'm working with our county council in a collaborative action finance working group. And one of the things we're looking at is green municipal investment bonds, um, which are underwritten potentially by the county council. And that means someone like Abundance can invest a hundred million pounds and buy AAA security bonds. And the county council can then divvy up that money for communities. So if we want 5 million on a wind turbine, 
or similar, they can divvy it up that in, that we're working or we're, we're thinking about how we could do that with retrofitting because some of the retrofitting will live beyond the lifetime or the payback will be on beyond the lifetime of the homeowner. So say the payback's 50 years, I'll never see the benefit of that. So why would I do it? But I have to do it. And actually cap, the capital repayment over time is entirely economically possible. It's low risk, low return. You know, and but how do how do the, how does someone then pay for that? Well, say we save you fifty quid on your bills, and then you pay twenty five quid extra to your um, utility company, maybe, and that twenty five quid stays with the lifetime of the home. So we're working on on things like that. Um, but there are schemes right now that you can get your, depending on your income and this kind of thing, you you can get grants and or help retrofitting your home. Yeah, I know South Norfolk Council did this sort of solar together campaign. So then that was like a collective solar panel installation. You know, if you if they got enough people in a certain areas, then there'd be a, yeah. a, a sort of di group discount that everyone could benefit. Um, I don't know what the discount was there because I don't know how much it would have been without the discount. So sure, you know. I'm not a fan of solar together. No? no oh, okay. for, a variety, for a variety of reasons is because yes you'll get a discount on your solar panel <clears throat> and you still buy it and you put it on your roof and you sell your electricity to the grid for around 5p and then you get that and then you buy it back at 34p um what i would much rather see is an investment in community shares for renewable community energy um where where you actually own the energy and what's called being a prosumer. So you actually consume the energy um, at a much cheaper rate. Um, so it's a much better economic model. Mm, okay. I can go into loads of detail about that. So. No, that's great. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions for now? Um, Sarah. Um, thanks. It's a very inspiring, lots of great ideas. So you say you will help groups do this. How do, yes. how do you resource your yourselves and and uh, and you know to get the time and the money and the resources to do it and secondly do you have a kind of, i think you on the do you have a kind of you have a kind of resource kit that that communities can use and a, a plan for doing the workshops and things um so we're just we're a bunch of committed volunteers um i struggle because i've just come to the end of my paid employment and my contract so there's always too much month left at the end of the money um and we're applying for grants right now and um looking at sponsorship from insurance companies and energy companies for uh both what we're doing and the website that we're launching and the website will have kits on there um whether or not i get paid for it, i'm going to do it anyway because it's needed yeah um great. you know it's, it's kind of as simple as that you know if i can if i can uh Jamie Jiskell, who's the mayor of Newcastle, when I was on his campaign team, I was, I was volunteering a lot. And he said to me, be careful about how much you volunteer because you deserve bread on your table as much as the next man. Um, but, you know, so, um, but often we're all in the same boat as activists or volunteers. So um, I am looking at um, being paid and I have actually been paid for speaking about this recently. Um, so that's a new thing, which is lovely. And equally, um, there are town and parish councils that are looking to pay for this kind of consultancy yeah. to help that plan. So I'm hoping hoping to generate some revenue and income from that. We're building out the methodology as we go and we're learning as we go as well as we iterate, which is really good fun um, in terms of this. But yes, we are developing a train the trainer program, um, which means we train people in the facilitation of the doing of it. It's very much from a self-organizing systems perspective and holacracy and you know much of which has come out of activist work with the extinction rebellion if a bunch of groups set up and we just go and do it brilliant longer term our revenue will come from the community energy that we install so there is revenue there and also the pub and the farm and other productive act economic activity will pay people and I'd much rather see that surplus go to the protection and conservation and education about the environment than in shareholders' pockets, making them richer and record profits. So. Great. Well, good work and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
any any other questions i think we're we've got about we've only got about five minutes left on the actual scheduled call so we're probably not going to do much of what, what i actually had planned but i will show you a little bit of uh, i'll show you some tools and stuff before we go but any other questions before we might move on can you give us some links if we want to follow up on some of this stuff yes absolutely how do you do that should we give you should we give you my email address or or what's the best way of doing that uh, yes, that would be fantastic. If you want to put your email addresses in the chat, if anyone wants any further information, that way I can download, uh, I can just download the chat and capture any email addresses. And I will show, just before we close, I'll show you a few tools and bits and pieces. And also, I'm really, what I'm really interested in is, is, is anyone in this group right now interested in doing a community climate action planning workshop? It'll take a couple of hours and we'll develop a high level strategic plan for your area. Great. Just pop it in the chat if you're. Excuse me, one minute. I'm just going to run to the loop. Back in a second. Oh, I just wanted to say, I, I was looking at some of your work, Sarah. I looked you up when you said you were a professor at Durham. It all looks really interesting. Oh, well, thank you, Christine. <laughs> that's, that's good. Um, and you're from Dorset. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm at uh, Bournemouth Uni. But, um, yeah, so I teach them. But, yeah, I'm interested in sustainability uh, stuff, too. So, you know, I was just thinking about contemplating restarting my doctorate on sustainability movements. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. So is that an area you, you're looking in? Oh, sorry, Jules is back. <laughs> yeah. I was hijacking just for a second when you gone. Just said, oh, I liked her work. Absolutely. Yeah, very definitely. Um, so very quickly, I'll share my screen. I'll show you, quickly show you some tools. Um, I will follow up with a Google Doc for everybody that's put their email in the chat. And then we can all collaborate in a Google Doc and we can kind of develop our plans uh, respectively. Um, so let me think. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is the great collaboration. Um, and it's a toolkit for council and community climate action. And currently, like I say, it's specific to Herefordshire, but it has an awful lot of actions you can take as an individual to improve um, your carbon footprint. You can look at buildings, what you can do with buildings, energy, food and waste or land use. And ostensibly what this site is currently designed to do is make a pledge and then I confirm when I've, when I've completed that pledge and it feeds that information back up to council so they get an overview. We're more interested in using it as a collaborative tool to act in cohort. So we'll be putting lots of information and toolkit um, information on there about the stuff that I've described, how to how to start a community benefit society, how to do a community share issue, how to identify sites for renewable energy, you know, this kind of thing. Not, not to say that individual actions aren't important and we can all take them as well. And we are, we've got a little bit of funding from the Society for Local Council Clerks. So there are 10,000 town and parish councils in the UK. Each one of them will have a clerk and they're probably the only member of staff that's paid, um, certainly in smaller councils anyway, and the only one that's trained. So fiduciary duty and legal duties and what have you. We use Trello project management software to manage our group. 
and it's called an agile methodology which is mostly used for product development um so we have only about three or four columns of project management we've got our team and resources all the handy links that you need we've got the stuff that we that is to do we've got stuff that we're monitoring we've got stuff that's in progress and we've got stuff that's done and so that's just a handy project management tool so we provide digital training to anyone who wants it there's a very handy mapping application that i developed called land explorer it's free at the point of access so please do jump on it's landexplorer.coop.coop and you can look at ordnance survey maps you can also look at land registry data and see who owns what around you um this particular map that you're looking at is um the red section is a county farm owned by Suffolk County Council. And this top section here is in the parish of Hopton come Nettishall. And it's something we're talking to the county farm estate about the use of. So we can start to see what's around us in terms of what's owned by the council. A very handy tool is also Parish Online, which is a paid tool, but we're looking to integrate it into the great collaboration. And something you can do here is you can look at energy performance certificates um, and you can actually look at the potential score increase. You can look at those that have the biggest bang for the buck when it comes to retrofitting. Um, this piece of software is called Hilo and it's free. Um, and it is, it's kind of Facebook off Facebook and it's for community groups to create a discussion, a request, an offer, a resource, a project, an event or a group. And it's got a map in there. We're likely gonna be putting parish online mapping in there, free version uh, for people to use. We've got the Center for Sustainable Energy Impact Tool, which is also really handy because it'll give you a really good snapshot of where your carbon footprint comes from, where you are. We happen to be in a very rural area um, so if I look at this, this was this was for Halston, which was my colleague at the, at my, the, at the event today. Um, but if I have a look at this, it shows that actually um, a, a large proportion of our CO2 comes from heating oil because we're not we've got no gas in the country. So everyone's got oil for oil fired central heating, but it breaks it up into housing, food, travel, waste. Really important to know. Um, this is a handy website. It's it's called parish.uk. Um, it might be slightly different if you're in a town, but it'll give you loads of demographic information, which is very helpful if you're applying for any kind of funding or bids. Um, lots of demographics on there and lots of detail about your parish. And so we're going to be incorporating all of this kind of really helpful planning information into the great collaboration. Another handy map is this one, which is the network infrastructure and usage map for UK power networks. And it's no good trying to start renewable energy or community energy where you are if there's no headroom in the grid supply. So the green areas are okay, the yellow not so good, not so great. Some are red, which means your substation can't take the energy and there's a long wait. So also very helpful in terms of planning. Um, there's another handy little tool called Map It which if I put in my postcode will show me my county council, my parliamentary constituency, my civil parish district ward and all that kind of handy information. Also very, very helpful when you start to actually talk to these institutions. Um, the final thing I'm going to show you is this is uh, the local resilience forum, forum contact details. Um, you will have a local resilience forum. They are responsible for the emergency planning, planning and planning in your area. And that includes fun, flooding, fire, drought, and other things that you really should be concerned about. Um, so if we just have a quick look at um, um, the Northeast, um, maybe um, North Yorkshire, South Yorkshire, let's have, let's have a look at um, Suffolk. Um, east of England so Suffolk I can find my community risk register and part of what we're doing in parish councils is looking at our emergency plans and introducing emergency plans for flooding for fire for drought and for food shortages as the climate crisis bites this is incumbent upon our 
councils to do this and if they're not then we need to ask them to um so suffolk has a local resilience forum and so this includes our fire brigade our police and what have you and so these are these are the institutions that we need to talk to as res as residents as the community and as and as voters um another thing is you probably have an observatory where you are um, so you can look up the, the Google, I just Googled Suffolk Observatory, and that will have all of the statistics in terms of indexes of multiple deprivation where you are, and population, um, children and young people. Also extremely important to plan, um, both in terms of grant funding, but also just in general in terms of planning. So what I was hoping to do today, and I appreciate I've probably talked a lot, was actually to dive in and do some planning because I, we recently did an event at the Centre for Alternative Technology. And what we did was we actually dived in and did a bit of a plan for Bolsall Heath at the time. So we all focused on one area in a workshop and started to write the plan for Bolsall Heath. So what we did was we populated some of the um, those kind of bits of information and started to actually um, put the links and start to map them and write the Community Climate Action Plan for Bolsall Heath. And that's really what I'd kind of hope to do today, but I think we ran out of time. I was going to maybe do, do a break a breakout rooms and start you to think about who your stakeholders are, what your values are, health and wellbeing and themes, but also then a deeper dive into maybe what your group name is, your name and email, finding out your parish district council, um, who's your association of local councils? You might, you've likely got a farming wildlife advisory group in your area, which will have farmers as members. Um, looking at land explorer and just drawing your area. And it might be, um, if it was in Sheffield, it might be your street. It will show you how many people are on the street, who owns what, how many are rented, how many are owned. And also then looking at things like impact reports. So there's a whole bunch of tools there and I will share them with everyone. And what we're hoping to do is put them together in the great collaboration to enable us to become citizen planners and actually take community climate action and be the masters of our own destiny. We don't need to wait here for permission. So I hope, I hope that's kind of helpful. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jules. Grand. Um, so it's five past. Um, anyone want to do a quick round of checkouts? How are you feeling? Did you feel, did you find it helpful? Any any feedback would be gratefully uh, gratefully received. Yeah, I found it really inspiring and and practical on practical terms helpful as well. Could you could we have a list of all the websites that you just went through? That was so interesting. Yeah, um, absolutely. I've started to put them in the document, and I'll just I'll just circulate the document to everybody on the call. That's put right, their email. Thank you. Right. I think this has been really really inspiring. Thanks, Joel. You're welcome. I, I really, I think it's this has so much information you've given us. It would have been really good to be able to use them a bit. Uh, I would have loved to have that. Um, and yeah, I think we, I'm really interested in, in continuing and maybe getting involved with some training. I did use some of those tools that you, you described before. So, but yeah. it, it looks very hopeful. I, I find it very interesting as well, and uh, information that I shall pass on to the local groups that I'm involved with, and very much hope that we might follow up with um, some training and things like that. But uh, yes, the, the first thing to get hold of some of the information that you're going to put out there. Be great. Fabulous, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I find it really helpful too. And luckily, Fiona from Durham is here too, even though she's probably eating by now. <laughs> but uh, So we can hopefully uh, take that up together. We've got a, a meeting of our group, Climate Action Durham on Monday. So I'll um, summarise what you've been saying and see if we can do something in Durham. It sounds sounds very good. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. OK. Uh, I think it's going to be very helpful. I mean, I, I think the project that we're looking at at the moment is going to be starting relatively small, but obviously the idea is to build it bit by bit. So, but obviously all the tools and everything else will help with that, you know, you know applied across the whole range of activities we might get around to doing. Did, did you have a, a register of, of people who've um, set up things so that um, we can look and see who's around in the local area? Yes, well, we, we'll be putting a map on the Great Collaboration. 
Good. We're also um, Transitions Network have op open data of transitions groups. Mm. Uh, we're putting all the transitions groups on maps. We're hoping to speak to, uh, well, we are speaking to Friends of the Earth. And we hope to put their groups on the maps as well. So again, we can just get a sense of who's around us and actually join in. Uh, well, that's right, because there's so many groups that um, one of the things I've come across is just the need to connect with each other. Mm. Um, very yeah. much. Can I just say, Jules, you are very softly, gently spoken, and it hides your great intelligence, which I know is oh. isn't there. <laughs> And <laughs> what we could really do with, I think, is something like a a four week course where we follow through because there is so much mm. that it's like also amazing and it's gone in one ear and out the other. <laughs> well, yeah, I totally hear you. I hear you. The workshops that we held were over a period of four days or four weekends spread over months and each workshop was four hours so we have kind of condensed 16 hours worth of workshop into an hour for okay. today and uh, yes i would absolutely love to do a deep dive where perhaps as a group we meet weekly monthly mm -hmm. whatever com feels comfortable and go through these separate bits and actually develop our plan together and I'd be very helpful to help convene those kind of meetings, either as a group with different areas like this, or individually with your groups in Durham and Sheffield and Leeds. And I know I know Andy from um, the Permaculture Association as well, who's uh, part of. He's uh, in Leeds, yeah, yeah. yeah. In Leeds as well. So. Yeah. But yes, yeah, Helen, it, it it deserves that, and also in terms of the learning and the the ability to be able to replicate it. Yes, it, it definitely. Yeah. I I think you deserve a life too, and for you to set up every one of us with, with a session, a several sessions, you 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 you'll be an old man with a walking stick by the time you finish. And we need it quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be fair, our community climate action group isn't just me. We do have a group of volunteers that are helping do this nationally, and that includes a, a student body. You'll be pleased to hear faculty of students are either mm. either current. Uh, current students masters or um, you know degree students or recently qualified students as well so today when I was exhibiting at the Suffolk Association of Local Councils I was helped by Maddie who's just got a first in environmental science so there, there was more than me so, so don't yeah but thank you yeah. <laughs> Jules do you, do you have a do you, do you have a surname or is it once you don't know you as just a Jules? Um, I'm Julian Thompson on LinkedIn T H O M P S O N. Um, so do connect if you'd like to. Um, but more commonly known as Jules, and all my email addresses are Jules. And I'll I'll pop my email address in the chat as well. Thanks. Perfect. Great, excellent. <laughs> Thanks very much. No problem. There we go, my, my email and uh, telephone number in the chat. And please do get in touch because, uh, you know, despite the fact that I don't yet earn a, earn a living do this, doing this, I will. Um, it has to be mission driven and uh, passion for me to be interested in. Um, and what greater work could we all be involved in? Thank you. Thanks, Jules. Thank you very much, Jules. Can I ask, is it Thompson with a P or without? Yes, with a P. So T H O. Okay, there's quite a few. <laughs> and I'm wearing a hat in, in my in my. You got a, well, I got a free account, so it doesn't show me photos. Oh, but... okay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll just I'll pop my LinkedIn profile, Brilliant. my LinkedIn in the uh, in the chat as well. Um, and then you can all find me and we can all stay in touch. And that's one of the things with the great collaboration that's most important. Again, um, that we all know where we are and we can collaborate and communicate and, you know, coordinate activity with one another because we are absolutely stronger together. And we all learned that in the pandemic with mutual aid. Mm -hmm. You know, we're stronger together and it's, it's a thing, you know. And we yeah. are facing, we're facing a poly crisis and we, you know, it's and it's super important because we need to know where our food's coming from mm -hmm. and where our 
which is coming from before we're hungry and before we're thirsty, you know, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's inspiring to see that there are things happening. It's always good. Have, has anyone else seen, seen the film 2040? Yeah, indeed. I'm just going to click stop on the record one second. Um, so, um,